Hello everyone, Zaid from Zed Security here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to easily and quickly create Trojans. A Trojan is a file that looks and behaves like a normal file, like an image or a PDF, but when executed it runs evil code in the background, like a backdoor or a keylogger. Therefore it's very very useful in social engineering. Show us some love by smashing that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's go! Before we jump into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Datacamp. Datacamp is like a one-stop shop for data science courses. It is a learning platform that is specially designed to teach you data science. From programming to machine learning to data engineering, you can pretty much start with no skills at all and become an expert in the field. They've got a really cool platform that makes the learning process fun and easy. So if you want to learn data science, then make sure you check them out. Use the link in the description, you'll get free access to the first chapter of any course across the whole platform. So, the goal is to generate a Trojan, and what we mean by a Trojan is a file that opens up a normal file that the target person should be interested in. This can be an image, a PDF, or anything you want, but at the same time, in the background, execute code for a backdoor, a keylogger, a credential harvester, or anything that is useful to you as a hacker. Let me show you a quick example. Right here I have two files, and as you can see, both of them look like they are images. They are an image of the recent poster of the new Matrix movie. You should check it out, it looks very interesting. But one of them is an actual image, and the other is a Trojan. Let me show you the difference. So if I just run an image, you can see we're just gonna see the image. Now, if I close this and run the Trojan, which has the same icon, actually looks like an image, and if I double click it, I will also get the image, so the behavior is identical to an actual real image, but at the same time, running this file right here runs evil code in the background. It's code for a backdoor for an Empire stager and sends a connection here to my Kali machine. So right now I can interact with this agent, and I have remote control over that computer, and I can do anything I want on this Windows computer this one right here, so I can access its webcam, its file system, download and upload and do anything that the normal user can do. And as you can see, we did this using a normal file that looks like a normal image. And like I said earlier, you can do this with any file type like a PDF or a Word document or anything else. Now the idea of hacking computers using Trojans is not new, it existed for very long, and there are so many ways to do it. I covered it in my ethical hacking course, I covered more ways in my social engineering course, and I even covered how to manually code everything in my Python and hacking course. So check them out if you wanna learn more about this and learn it in details, but I'm gonna teach you a quick way of doing that using PowerShell in this video. So all you'll need to do this is one PowerShell command or function that allows us to download a file from a specified URL and save it on desk as the name that you specify in here. Now we're gonna run this command twice, one time to download the actual image that we want the user to see, like the matrix image in here, or the PDF, or anything you want, and the second time, we're gonna be downloading the evil file, which could be a backdoor, or a keylogger, or anything else you want to run in the background. Very, very easy. Let's do it step by step, just to make sure that everything is gonna work the way we want it. So let's test this functionality first of all. So I'm gonna go to my browser and find an image or a PDF that I wanna display to the user. And you wanna make sure that the link that you use is the direct URL so you can access that resource directly. It won't view the resource inside the HTML page. So right here I have a direct link to that matrix image. So I'm simply gonna copy it and I'm gonna go back to my notepad and we're just gonna paste it in here as the URL. And finally, we're gonna store this, the out file, as, and let's call it matrix.png. So we're downloading a file from this URL, and we're storing it on disk with the following file name. So if we just copy this, and open up a PowerShell prompt, so we're just gonna type PowerShell, 
and right now we are in this specific path so i'm actually just going to navigate to the desktop so i'm going to do cd desktop to navigate to the desktop you can see we are in the desktop now and i'm just going to paste the command that i copied so i'm just going to right click in here and i'm going to hit enter to execute it as you can see it's downloading the file we can already see it in here and here we go now we have the image downloaded on our desktop so now we know that this function actually works as expected and we can use it to download a file from the specified URL and save, and save it in the current working directory. So that's very, very good. So I'm going to delete this file. And all we have to do right now is use this command twice, like I said. Download the file that you want to display to the user first, open it, and then download the file that you want to run in the background and open it. So this is basically a download and execute payload. Then we're gonna store everything in a bat file. A bat file is a file that contains a number of commands that get automatically executed when the user double click it. Bat files can only run system commands, not PowerShell commands. Therefore, because this is a PowerShell and we executed it in the PowerShell prompt, we will have to actually type PowerShell before the command. And then we're gonna say the PowerShell command that we want to run is this command and we're gonna enclose it by double quotes at the start and at the end. So basically all we're saying right here that we want to execute the following command, the command that we just run in the PowerShell prompt as a PowerShell command. And we're doing this by specifying the dash command argument. Then we know that this command is gonna download the file and it's actually gonna store it on disk uh, with the following name matrix.png. So the next thing we'll want to do is actually run that file, execute it so the user sees it on their screen. So we're simply just going to type the file name, the matrix.png, because that file is downloaded now on desk. Next, we're going to need to do the second step, which is download the file that we want to run in the background and execute it on the system. So you're going to need to create a backdoor. I'm not going to cover it in this video because it's going to become very long. I cover it on YouTube and on my courses in multiple places. And I even cover how to create and program your own backdoor in my Python course. So feel free to go to YouTube, Google, or watch my courses to create your evil file. Or even if you want to create a keylogger, like I said, I'm using a ready one. It's already hosted on my own Apache server on Windows. So I'm simply just gonna copy its URL right here. It's an Empire Stager. And we're simply gonna paste its code in here. So I'm first gonna need to run the exact same command as we have in here. And we're gonna replace the image URL this time with the link to the Empire Stager. So I'm just gonna need to get it again from here. Copy link and we're gonna paste it in here. And obviously we don't wanna store it as matrix.png. We're actually gonna store it as a batch file as well. So we're just gonna call it empire.bat. Now obviously you can use different names. This file being a bat file, we can actually embed all of the code in here within it, but I'm just trying to show you a generic way that you can use with multiple scenarios. So now this link is going to download the backdoor for us or the stager or the evil file. And the next step is going to be to execute that file. Again, exactly like we did in here. We downloaded matrix.png from this URL and then we run it. And then we download the backdoor in this line. We're saving it as empire.bat and we're gonna run it by simply typing empire.bat. And that's it, we're ready. The only thing is, once this is executed, as we seen when we executed this PowerShell command, the image was downloaded in the working directory, in the desktop. Therefore, if the target downloads this in their downloads and run the Trojan, they will actually see the image file being downloaded and the backdoor being downloaded to that working directory. So they will see new files being displayed in their file in here, in their folder in here, and therefore that will be suspicious. So what we're gonna do before doing anything, we're actually gonna change our working directory exactly the same way that we did in here when we did CD desktop, but instead, Instead of going to the desktop, which is a place that the user sees a lot, we're actually gonna go to the temp directory. So we're gonna do cd temp, and we're using the percentage signs in here to tell the operating system to navigate to the temp path, regardless of where that temp path is. So we're using the environment temp variable. And that's it, we're actually ready to go. We're gonna first of all go to the temp directory, download an image or any file that you wanna display to the user, open the file, 
download an evil file, open it again. And you can do this multiple times if you want to open a number of evil files or a number of things. So this can be used in so many scenarios. So once you're done, we're going to save this. And you just want to make sure that you set the type to all files and set the extension to a batch file. So use whatever name you want. So let's say matrix Trojan this time. And we're just going to call it dot bat. Now, obviously, you don't want to tell the user that this is a Trojan. We're just doing this in the video. And that's it. We're done. Let's select a place to save it. Let's save it on my desktop. That's fine. And I'm going to save it there. And that's it. We're ready. Let's go ahead and execute it. So we're going to minimize this, close this, minimize and close. And I'm just going to go to my Kali machine and actually kill my connection at the moment. So we're just going to go back and we're going to do kill all so that I don't have any connections. So if we list, you'll see we've got nothing right now. And let's just go ahead and run this. And perfect, as you can see, it's downloading the image first and then it's running it. Now, obviously, preferably, you'd want to use a file that is not that big. So it's downloaded and executed quickly. But as you can see, we can see the image on file. We don't see any strange files in here because we stored everything in the temp directory. And our if our evil code got executed in the background, I should have got an agent in here. And sure enough, as you can see, I get a connection through my empire. So now I can remotely control control that Windows machine from here. Now I know what you're thinking. This file right here looks very, very suspicious. It doesn't look like the Trojan that I showed you at the start of the video. Not only that, but if you right click this file and open it in a text editor, you will actually see the code inside it, which is not very good. The user is going to know that you're trying to do something suspicious. Therefore, what you want to do at the end, once you test it like this as a bat file, is compile it to an executable, similar to what we have in here, and then give it an icon. And also run it in the background, because when we executed this, we had a terminal window that we seen, which is also very, very suspicious. So to address all of these issues, all you have to do is compile it to an executable. You can use a program like bat2exe. I will include its links in the resources. So all you have to do is simply run the program, open the bat file that you just created, or you can simply just drag and drop it in here. You can already see the code. And all we want to do is tick the icon in here and select the icon that you want to use. Now, if this was a PDF, you can simply just download a generic PDF icon or a generic image icon. But as you can see in Windows, if the file is an image, you will actually see a thumbnail of the image, similar to what we have in here. Therefore, we're going to have to manually create an icon that looks like this image. So to do that, we're going to use an online service. Again, there's a lot of these. And simply, you're just going to have to upload it. So we have the image in our downloads. And this is it. We're going to click on convert and download it. We're going to save it. It's going to go into my downloads. So if I just look at it here very quickly, you can see the icon in here. So we're going to go back to our bat2exe. We already ticked the icon. We're going to select the icon that we want, which is in my downloads. Double click it. And we're also going to change the exe format. We're going to keep it at 32 bit, but we're going to select the invisible option, which will basically run the executable in the background without showing a terminal window so that it is less suspicious. You can even ask it for UAC. And if you do, then the backdoor is going to run as admin, but we don't want to do that at this stage. So I'm just going to click on convert in here to convert it to an executable for me. And again, we're just going to store this on the desktop. And this time, let's call it matrix poster. Save. Everything is fine. Let's minimize and look at the file. And perfect. As you can see, the file looks perfect. It looks like an actual image with the thumbnail. And before I run it, I'm going to kill my connection. So again, we're going to do kill all Y list to make sure we got nothing. We have nothing. And let's execute the file. As you can see, we did not see a terminal window, so everything got executed in the background. Again, we can see the image in here. Icon looks not suspicious at all. But if we go to our Kali machine, we can see that we got a new connection. So we can interact with this agent and we can go 
CMD, sorry, I mean shell, to get a shell on that target system. We can do PWD to see our working directory. Do it there to see where we are. And from here, like I said, you have remote control over that computer and you can do anything you want. And like I said earlier, you don't have to always use an Empire stager. You can use any file and you can display any file to the user as well. All you have to do is just simply download the files you want and execute them like so. That's a quick and dirty way of doing this. Check out my courses or research Google if you want to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be updated every time we release a new video.